Hello and welcome to another sculpt walkthrough, this time for a crystal dragon. We'll be going through the whole process of sculpting and preparing this miniature, while also separating it into five parts so that it prints easier. So let's get started. I'm starting by using the armature poser again, however once I've finished creating this dragon I've created a base mesh from that. So feel free to visit the gum road for the uh, dragon poser and use this as a starting point. Get him stuck back into the skull now and we're just working on the face at the moment getting the getting the structure right for the head and then creating some horns using the mirror modifier getting those mirrored across the face creating a couple more using the snake hook to sort of pull one out from the face and draw sharp to create the mouth So I'm pairing in all those together to the face and then I can move them around easily. Creating a curve using just a, a circle path as the diameter of that. And then taking the arms from the armature poser and adding those on. I don't actually use arms in the end, I just have the wings instead. I was just trying that out at first. So creating the first wing from a very thin cube and then using snake hook to bend it and grab to sort of shape it into a, a basic shape. Then I can just use the standard brush and mark out where the separation of the wings would be. And from a sphere start shaping the, the large crystal that he's uh, resting on. I'm just using draw sharp and, and the standard brush and marking out sort of random really where I want the separations of the rocks to be. Positioning the top of the body into a more interesting place. As you're selecting each of the, the points of the curve, you can hit Alt and S and change the diameter of those. Using the mesh filter and inflate to bulk out the arms. making the legs much thicker than the, the arms. So once I've got the curve into a place I'm happy with, then you can convert it to a mesh and continue working on it. marking out where I think the rib cage would be. Creating an idea for the end of the tail, how that would look.
I'm just extending the wing now towards the chest and starting to think about perhaps getting rid of those arms and just having the wings as being the arms really. creating an uh, initial scale shape. So this will be duplicated throughout the model. Using the array modifier and the curve modifier to fit it to the curve. is that while you're editing a curve if you look in the tools there's a tilt option and it means when you click and drag once you're selecting a point you can rotate the point and angle the meshes in the, the direction you want them to be facing it's very useful Once you've got those in place, you can continue to edit the uh, the scale, and then you can see the the changes. I'm just deciding to position the front scales manually, giving me a little bit more control. But once I start doing the ones on the the, the back, then they, they'll just be an array modifier because there's so much, there's so many more of those. Trying to give the horns a bit more visual interest by bending them at different angles. So if you checked out my uh, creating hands faster, this is the, the base mesh for the handy hand poser. If you've not seen that video yet, just take a look at that because it's uh, quite useful for creating hands. Making sure the back of the, the scale is nice and fat so it pushes right into the body and then we don't have any issues when we're 3D printing. I'm going around that crystal now with the H-Polish brush. It's been tweaked, it's a little bit of a custom brush but if you check out the hard surface video I've done then you can find out more about setting that up yourself. So masking out the, the top and bottom of the torso after making a duplicate and then I can mask slice and fill holes and mirror across the x-axis and then create a rib cage from that. This is just so that while I'm sculpting on the torso I can make sure that I'm not losing the anatomy of the dragon. So now I'm working on some hips. I made a duplicate of the rib cage, put those in position as well, just so I can keep in mind where the legs will begin from.
making a duplicate and masking out the nose and then I can mask slice to new object define that a little better separate from the face Same with the lower jaw as well, just either mass slice and fill holes or mass slice to new object, either works really, as long as you make a copy of the original mesh and then from there able to define the edges of each object better. So I could have done the jaw and the, and the nose separate at first, but I think it just helps to get a general shape in place first. And you can check the proportions of the whole miniature before you get into these kind of details. So it doesn't take long just to split these bigger objects into smaller ones once you're happy. Making a copy of that scale so I can use it on the head. Trying to create an interesting design there. So I put it into more of an open mouth pose now, trying to make the face look a little bit more impressive. refining that scale a bit more and then repositioning and making him a bit bigger. So you can see with the torso I'm able to push and pull out the geometry from where the rib cage and the hips are so it helps give me more of a structure to that shape so I can make sure that it's not too thick or too thin in different places. So I made a copy of the curve object before I converted it to a mesh. So I've gone back to that curve object now so that I can reposition the whole thing and then I can always we can always convert that into a mesh later on again. But the curve allows you to create the flowing shape with much more control and modify it. So you can get into a bit of a mess if you start doing it directly uh, with a mesh.
so I decided to get rid of the arms at this point. I think it could have looked cool either way, but a lot of the designs of dragons I was looking at tended to have ones without arms and it was just the wings. So I've been a duplicate of that curve for the torso and I'm using an array modifier with the scale that's on the chest and then we can repeat that across the back. So I'm using that tilt tool when you're inside the curve edit mode and then you can make sure that the spine's positioned correctly. And it's starting to take shape now. So just working on a sort of emblem for the middle here. Separating the wing from the arm, so I can add more definition to that. Using separate objects for the the separations of the wings.
So I'm starting to experiment with some textures now and it's not something that I've done much at all really on a sculpt until now. Uh, but I thought um, if you check out this video from, what's he called? Zacharias Reinhardt, I think he's called. Uh, but if you check that video out, it explains how you can set up uh, your brush to, to work in this, behave in this way while you're creating textures. And it's very handy. I just thought for things like the skin and the wings might be great. Just adding a little bit of extra definition with uh, low effort. I've got these textures from two different places, free resources. So if you check out the description, I'll put in a link to those as well, because unfortunately Unfortunately, you can't redistribute them yourself, so I'll just forward you to those. While in sculpt mode, you can box select a mask if you hit the B key and then click and drag the area you want to mask. And that could be quite useful for just when I was separating those uh, crystals there. Using draw sharp uh, reversed on the edges like this really helps make the edges stand out I find.
adding in some teeth but making them link duplicates so as I'm adding extra detail to them then just copy it over to the others. So now I'm going into each of these crystal objects and using a, a planar brush and as I mentioned before if you check out that hard surfing sculpting video then you can see how that's set up. Really really a great brush for this kind of stuff. So I'm adding in just a cylinder for some reason I created it from a sphere. I created a cylinder from a sphere for some reason. And then I'm adding a rock texture.
So repurposing the tooth, one of the fangs for um, for toenails. So when I select the, the extra detail of those horns and the scale and hit Control J then making sure that I'm selecting the scale last and then it gets added to that mesh so the other link duplicates will update. Just recreating those separations of the wing with a cylinder, just so that it looks a bit tidier. Um, having trouble smoothing out the original attempt. So I smoothed the legs out and got rid of that texture uh, attempt and I'm just trying out some separate scales. So lots of different separate objects to see how that works out. Obviously if you do something like this there's a lot more to consider when you're 3D printed. So you got to make sure all those objects are correctly overlapping so you don't get any gaps inside.
So I think this is the final texture that I go with for the, the sort of the majority of the scales on the dragon. Trying to give it less, make it stand out less than the main scales. So they're obviously there, but not as prominent. Something that might work really well for the scales, which um, I don't really know enough about geometry nodes to have attempted it at the time, but um, I think it could be some really good solution with geometry nodes to make the scales. After selecting all of the objects in the, in the leg and the foot, then you can hit the forward slash to focus in on those objects. It's having quite a bit of trouble getting the back legs looking right, so it's a good idea to focus in on, on something like that. Then you can, don't have any distractions with the other objects. Really trying to thicken up the part that meets the chest, as it would be, I suppose, like the shoulder of an arm.
There's a brilliant add-on called Copy Attributes Menu and it allows you to select two objects and then you can copy across the location to the first one. And that I find is really useful when you're creating lots of different objects and you want them to have the same position as another one. For example, the face and the jaw and the teeth and the eyes, they all want to be starting from the same origin, usually. So it's great to be able to copy the location and the rotation. So I'm creating a chain link now and then using the array modifier and the curve modifier to make it meet the curve and then you can use the object offset and point, point it towards the empty and then rotate the empty by 90 degrees and then that's what creates the chain link pattern uh, but if you check out the description again I'll put in a link to a video to understand that better.
So I'm using a cylinder and sculpting out a shape that will be used to puncture holes into the into the wings. So position it, stretch it out so it's nice and long and then position it within the, the wings and then you can use the build tool add-on to uh, use the difference option and then it will it'll take those shapes away from the wing and then you're left with these little tear holes. I ran into a little bug with the masking on this object. I find every now and then that the mask doesn't appear at all, even though when I look in the overlays menu, it is checked to be visible. And apparently this is some sort of bug. So the solution I found was to go into the overlays menu and uncheck and then check the mask visibility. And it does appear again then. So I have no idea why that happens only on, uh, very rarely on an, on an object, but perhaps this is fixed in the latest version of Blender 3.0. This is 2.93 I'm on at the moment. So I'm trying out some shapes that look a bit more crystal-like for the top of the head. And taking some of the crystals from the base and adding them to the to the point of the wing there. Using that plain brush again.
So I don't actually end up using the chains. I was going to use it around the waist, but I just decided against it in the end. So the mesh is really quite dense now, so I'm having quite a few issues with the viewport. So generally everything's slowing down and it's getting a lot more difficult to sculpt. I'm either hitting a limit with my computer or with Blender itself. So I'll join the leg together now and then I can work on the, the knee and the ankle and join in together the objects using Ctrl J and then remeshing. So with the right wing, I've made it a unique, I've joined, joined all the objects together and made it a unique object. And then I've just bent it slightly just to give it a little bit of variation and something to watch out for when you, because it's been mirrored across the X axis. Um, when you're, when you're applying the scale, it will flip all the normals. So they're inside out and then you just need to use the command to recalculate outside. So if you hit F3 and search for that, then uh, you'll, you'll be able to find that. But if you be using the uh, add on that I use for the sculpt pies, there's a shortcut to that command built in. So I'm joining together all the main points, all the main parts now. So the, the legs, torso, and the head, and the, each wing, because these are legs joined to the torso, and then the wings separate and the head separate. It's gonna be five different objects in total. So the base is separate as well. And I'm joining all these objects together, making a copy of all the objects first, and then joining together each of the main objects so that then I can remesh them at a really high density. And then 
then decimate them. And then once I've done that, I'll have five different objects that I can use to cut away from each other so that they sock it into each other. You might see me using the 3D print toolbox as well. And I'm clicking the solid button to make sure that, that the object has no holes. So it's, uh, it's a manifold object. So while I was remeshing these objects to a much higher density, it did crash a few times. So now that all the objects are watertight, it's time to export each one and then support them. Uh, this time I use light cheese slicer. Once you've printed it out, it's time to stick it together.
and here's the finished miniature. I hope you enjoyed watching the creation of this uh, crystal dragon. Perhaps you can bring some of the, the techniques used here into your own sculpting workflow in Blender. Don't forget to check out the Gumroad for miniatures like this and uh, free sculpting resources. Also consider supporting me on Patreon to contribute to the creation of videos like these. Thanks to everyone who's supported me so far. You can see their names here. See you in the next video.